Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Game Hammer Extra, and today we have quite a massive set of pickups. <gasps> wow! So, let's get straight into them, shall we? I'm going to start with the ones at the bottom because they're the uh, ones I've had for a while now. I tried to put all these together and uh, we finally found some more PlayStation 2. It's been really, really hard to find uh, PS2 games because they're getting rarer. As we get further and further into the collection, we're over 75% now. It's getting harder and harder to find games that we don't have. A lot of CEX stores have big, big selections of PS2 games, but they're all ones we already have and it's getting to be quite troublesome to find some, but we've found some. So we'll start off with uh, IndyCar Series 2005, which turned out to actually be a rather good, rather fun indie racing game. Good condition box, and everything is here in it, so I was really happy to see that. It's a decent enough game as well, so that is always a bonus. But it wasn't the only thing, because at the same shop that we found this in, in the CAX, was a 22 Party. Now, this is from 505 Games, so you know it's going to have a little bit of a quirk to it, and it shouldn't be the same as the standard party mini games thing. And that's true, it is quirky, and it's a bit different to the standard party mini games. Hopefully, though, everything is explained in the game because the manual isn't here. So, it's an oddity, it's, it really is weird, and we'll end up having a Game Hammer review on it because it is that kind of game where you can actually get a bit of fun out of the review, which is what I want from this. But it's not the only thing, because at the same shop we ended up getting something that I thought I already had, and it turns out we didn't. Manchester United Manager 2005. Now, we have a Manchester United game from Codemasters at the same time as, like, Alex Ferguson or something like that. This is not it, and I got confused with that, so we looked past this at first, and then Jen went, do we actually have that game? Because she didn't recognise the title, and I'm glad she didn't, because I thought we had it, we didn't. So, Manchester United Manager 2005, good condition. It's a, a standard Courtmaster style uh, football management game. Instructions are all here. It's in good condition. Not fantastic, but good. So clearly someone has played it. And I can see why. It's not really my kind of game. When I go for football management games, it was always like uh, Premier Manager back in the early days, the PC or the Amiga. Championship Manager back in the day, like 2000. What was it? Championship Manager 2, in fact, not 2000. Championship Manager 2. That was a good one, 95, that kind of thing. They were good. So this one's a bit more modern than, than what I usually go for, and uh, it takes a bit of time to get used to the console controls, but it's a decent enough game, and I actually quite enjoyed it. And it's good when you have times like that, where you, you find something that uh, is a bit like something that you recognise and something that you're familiar with, like a football management game, but it does it in a slightly different way, because it makes you think, is it better, is it worse? Is it just the same, or is it just a different version of how you're used to? It's always nice to see different takes on things. So, that's not the end of it though, is it? Because we also have another racing game, Crashed. Now, this is a bit more... Uh, I feel like it's it's trying to do a bit of burnout, but it's a bit like IndyCar as well. And it's in great condition. It's not quite as good as either of those games. But everything is here. It's got a P for pre-owned written on it, but uh, we can't have everything. And it's, it's a decent enough game. I enjoyed playing it. It was alright. But here's the weird thing. It was produced by one uh, company, Empire, but Explosive seemed to have uh, taken over. And they've just stuck a sticker on the front. So always look out for stuff like that because it's an interesting variant. I'm not going to try and collect all the variants. I am only interested in one copy of every game for the collection because the idea is that this is going to be a museum where you can play hands-on and come in and have a sit down and play a game and see how games used to be. That kind of thing. That's what I want to do with this collection eventually. It's going to take years. Yeah, I'm still... A couple of years ago I was saying it would take seven to ten years. I'm still thinking it's going to take about ten years. It's just how it is. I think we underestimate how long it would take to source some of this stuff. But it's not the only thing because I also picked up Mythmaker's Orbs of Doom. Now, last year when I did a Game Hammer Christmas review on uh, Mythmaker's Trixie and Toyland for the Wii, I mentioned that this game existed. I've been hunting it down all year. Finally got a copy a couple of weeks ago. And it, it's 
It's not what I was expecting, let's put it that way. I thought it would be another version of Trixie and Toyland, you know, the Ninja Bread Man turned into that weird wizard game, the Anubis 2, uh, Trixie and Toyland, all similar uh, games using the same engine and not often a lot of sprite swaps, basically. I thought this was one of that collection, but it's not. It's from the Myth Makers line with Trixie and Toyland, and Trixie is in this, but it's actually Super Monkey Ball with a Myth Makers uh, thing or a skin over the top. It's not as good as Super Monkey Ball, but it's surprisingly better than Trixie and Toyland was. So I kind of enjoyed it, but the controls are really, really hard to get hold of. Uh, not get hold of. Uh, they're really, really hard to get used to, so it can be a problem to play. But no manual, so at least I know how to play it. But that's not uh, all, because the final PlayStation 2 game that I picked up is a one I have wanted since I started collecting PS2 games. It has been really, really hard to track this down. And for a certain amount of time, I thought it may not have actually come out. I've seen it on Xbox once, but not PS2 until I finally found a copy. And it's The Bard's Tale. This is fantastic. If you like the uh, Champions of Norath games or the Baldur's Gate games or a few of those like Arthurian legend ones that turned out to be a bit in the same style, the hack and slash dungeon crawler action RPG style. Get this. This is that kind of style. It's basically Baldur's Gate with the Bard's Tale on it. It's brilliant. I love playing it. It's fantastic. Great condition. Everything's here. Loving this. It was worth the wait. So what more can I say with that? It definitely was worth the wait because I had so much fun. But it's not everything that we've found because speaking of games I've had a lot of fun with and action RPGs, Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. This is a single player, massively multiplayer online role playing game. It's the best way to describe it. That's what it feels like when you play it. And it is super addictive. I love playing this. It has the same feel as when I used to play World of Warcraft every night after work. I have had so much fun with this and I'm going to have a lot more fun because I've not yet finished it. The moment I put it into test it out, I played for an hour. It's that kind of game. It's really good fun. I'm glad I finally tracked a copy down. It's only four quid on Xbox. Not many people really want it, but uh, I'll cover up the code just in case. I haven't used it yet. It's uh, got no manual, but it has an online pass. And to be honest with you, you don't need the manual. It walks you through everything. It's such a good game. I'm hoping that uh, a sequel does eventually come out. It will be from another company because that company went bankrupt. Spent an awful lot of money on it and uh, it didn't work out for them. But it's such a good game. So it's a, it's a real shame. Because I love it. It quickly became one of my favourite Xbox 360 games. That's how good it is. So I recommend, if you get a chance to try it, go for it. But it's not all. Because uh, a guy called The Nostalgia Nerd, who you may have seen on uh, YouTube. Very, very good show. And I really like it. He has a thing about Rise of the Robots. And uh, I don't have the game. But he's tweeted out a copy of the book. And then I thought, hang on, I've seen that around. So I went and got it. It turns out I had seen it. It's a novelization of a really, really, really bad game. But it's great condition. And uh, I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to see how it is. This was uh, originally sold from somewhere in Germany. Unverb... Unverb Preisem Fellung. I don't know what that means, but uh, try this. I think it's a, I think that's a second-hand bookshop for 1990. So is that 19 uh, euros or 19 Deutschmarks? I don't know. Uh, when was this from? 94. Could be uh, Deutschmarks because the euro didn't come until 2000, did it? So yeah, but it's the UK version, and it's all in English, and it looks in good condition. I'll have a read and I'll do a review of it at some point. When I do a review of uh, the computer um, novelizations and all the console game novelizations, I've got like Assassin's Creed, Gears of War, Dead Rising, I think I have a book on as well. It's uh, I've got quite a collection. I'll, you know, People that have watched this show for a long time know I love my novelizations. Well, we'll see how that goes. But there are some others. When I saw this in CEX, my first uh, thought was, I've seen that outfit before. It's uh, Chambara Beauty. I picked it up for a pound because I'm not going to chance uh, a huge amount of money on this. It says, Blades, uh, Babes, Blades and Bikinis, what more do you want? Well, a good story would be a good one and some good acting would be nice as well. But yeah, Chambara Beauty. 
based on the video game series One Chanbara for PS2, Xbox 360, Wii, created by Tamsoft and D3. We do not have a copy of One Chan, uh, One Chanbara in this set. So, where's O? Oh, O's here. We don't have it. Uh, it goes from Akami Oni Onimusha. We don't have uh, one of these. So, did it come out in uh, the UK or is it a Japanese or American thing? I don't know. But uh, I'm going to give it a try and we'll have a film hammer review on it at some point. Uh, I don't know how good this is going to be. It's probably going to be terrible, but uh, I'm hopeful. Hopeful that if it, it does turn out to be bad, it's going to be one of those so bad it's entertaining films. I can but hope. Right, I've got five more things here, and uh, all of them came from a charity shop for a pound each, if you can believe this. And I couldn't when I saw it. I had to double take. So, let's start with Mahjong Quest Expeditions. Some of you might be wondering why on earth we got that. Well, the fact is, I love Mahjong, and it's all here manual and the game. It's in great condition. Mahjong is, well, Mahjong Solitaire is one of those games that I've been playing since I first installed Linux on my old uh, PCs back in the 90s. And there weren't a huge amount of games back then with Linux, but Mahjong Solitaire was one of the built-in ones that tended to come bundled. If you, if you downloaded and installed a distro like Red Hat or um, Mandrake or things like that, Debian I think had it as well. Mahjong was uh, one of those recommended installs. It's like, it's a solitaire game. You match tiles. And you know what? It is a lot of fun. So I'm really happy to add this to my collection because playing uh, Mahjong for a game on the move on my DS, I love it. So, got my where is my DS? It's around here somewhere. DS Lite, there it is. This is actually my dad's. My dad bought uh, a DS specifically to play um, Brain Trainer when he was at work. So it's in really nice condition, and thanks, Dad, for giving this to me when you decided you didn't want to play anymore. <laughs> I've been playing Mahjong on it in <laughs> instead. It's great fun. I highly recommend it. Don't uh, don't just pass over those games because sometimes a little puzzle game like that or a little solitaire time passing game is exactly what you want on the move. But that's not all, because in the same place, I found the complete edition of La Noir. Look how good condition that. I don't think this has been played. It's in amazing condition, and everything's here. It's so, so good. Everything is here in great condition, and for a pound, I just, I could not pass this up. I already have the standard edition version, and there was no way I was uh, leaving this behind in a charity shop when uh, I could add it to the museum. So it's all here, and I'm just carefully putting it all back together. This is a brilliant game. It's like... Uh, it's like no other game I've played, to be honest with you. A bit like uh, Police Quest, crossed with Grand Theft Auto, crossed with a few other games of that style. It it just sucks you in. I love it. I know the lost stick for the uh, questioning uh, interrogation system that's got, and yeah, it could have done with a bit more of uh, a bit more finesse. But a lot of the time, you can just back back out if uh, you've picked the wrong thing by apologising and coming back out and trying again. So it's not as bad as people make out. And I have really enjoyed that game. I'm looking forward to giving it another try when I get some time. But that is going into a protective uh, sleeve in a moment. Got my protective sleeves just here. And uh, it's going to get protected, put into the museum, and a nice display piece. But that's not all, because uh, in the same shop was Borderlands, the pre-sequel. Now, I've never played a Borderlands game before. I know a lot of people rave about them now. I'd love to be able to pick up the rest. But it's in great, great condition. And again, everything's here. Look at that. It doesn't open very fast, so it hasn't been used much. I'm looking forward to giving it a try. I've heard good things about Borderlands. I like that kind of action game. So it's like a loot shooter, I think they call them. So we'll see how it goes and see how I feel about it. We'll do a Game Hammer review because I have changed up how I do Game Hammer reviews. Now, instead of everything going into the computer, everything goes into the DVD recorder because the upgrade to Catalina screwed up my... Uh, video capture system, if I press record now it crashes because uh, that's just how it is. So everything goes into the DVD recorder instead and now the screen is just being used as a screen to see what's going on. Everything goes straight onto the DVDs, which means that my ability to record everything into my archive of uh, discs is a bit more efficient because it just goes straight in. <laughs> but I think I've saved the best till last and I'm going to show you these together. Remember, 
a pound per uh, per game. Well, per DVD case, essentially. So, with the last bit... <laughs> Atari Flashback Collection Volume... Classics uh, Collections Volume 1 and 2. A pound each. So, 50 games, and then another 50 games. Basically, one pence per game. And you know what? These are fantastic. The versions on here are in HD, because it's coming from the Xbox One. Uh, they work really well. Some of the paddle games, you have to turn the, uh, the sensitivity of the analog sticks down. It's just one of those things. Modern gaming is a lot more sensitive. So you've got to turn the sensitivity down, otherwise they're basically unplayable. But once you make that little tweak, which should have been done uh, at the start at games, then uh, you can play a really, really enjoyable game. I have had so many hours already on this. Uh, adventure, Centipede, Millipede... Oh, what was that? There's a, there's a one, and I'm going to show it here. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but it looks amazing. You're flying and shooting, and then you go into... Uh, a small space station, you've got to go and uh, blow things up. It's basically a kind of space invaders, space shooter in 3D style, crossed with Hero, if you, if you can imagine that. It's great fun. So I've been playing the hell out of these, and I cannot recommend them highly enough. I don't know whether Volume 3, which apparently has been delayed and delayed, may be coming out here in the end of December. I don't know whether that's going to be worth picking up. I'm going to have a look at it and see, because... Um, I've already got a hundred games here, and last time I checked what was on the list for three, it looked like they were starting to repeat some games, as if it might be a best of. Now, if it's a best of, that's great. Pick that one up, because <laughs> you won't have the filler. But at the same time, these are becoming quite easy to pick up second hand, so maybe go for them instead if it's cheaper. I'll see what's uh, what's actually on it once it finally arrives, and uh, we'll talk about that in a, another episode of Game Hammer Extra. Because some of these Atari things, they're classics for a reason, and they're great fun to play. I've spent hours on them, and it's, it's an easy, simple way to get a big catalogue of Atari 2600 games, and a few arcade clones as well. Oh, and just as one extra thing, you, you wouldn't believe this, I've, uh, just after I'd uh, finished recording uh, that pickups video, <laughs> which I'm going to put the ending on in a minute, but I, I wanted to jump in here because just as I'd finished recording that, we went out to uh, just check out the town, you know. And I'm glad I did because uh, we found <laughs> this. It's a, let's zoom in a little bit, a Teenage Mutant uh, Hero Turtles mug with the 80s style on it. How cool is that? And this is from copyright 1990, so it's like the height of Turtle Mania. I love it. I think it's great. Oh, I'm really happy with that. So, there's uh, nice things which you find uh, if you check out all these charity shops. And it's uh, something I keep telling people when they say, Oh, my local shops never have anything. Yeah, they'll never have anything until the day they do. And if you're not there on the day that they have it, you won't see it. It's just how it is. So keep looking, because uh, we've gone ages with uh, a complete dearth of uh, cool stuff to pick up. But on occasion you find something and that's what makes it worth it. That's why I like the retro uh, scene and the hobby itself because every now and again you find something really good. Oh and just as a quick really quick update I went back to the same charity shop that I got those last things from. Actually no the the charity shop uh, that I got the turtle smoke from wasn't the same one it was the one down the road. Guys get out to your local charity shops people are clearing out for Christmas. For a pound in total I just got Super Mario Brothers Wii, which for some strange reason, I had it rattle as I was coming home. Turns out they've left Super Mario Galaxy in Super Mario Brothers Wii, so yeah, didn't even see that in the shop. I should have looked quick, a bit uh, clearer, shouldn't I? But that wasn't all because I actually got these other ones as well Sonic All Stars Racing Transformed, Lego Pirates of the Caribbean, and Sonic 06. So I don't have a PS3, but I could start a nice collection with just that. These four games, well, five technically, for a pound. Get to your charity shops. Now, I'm going to trade these in because I don't collect PS3. I don't have a PS3, I don't collect PS3. Might in the future, but at the moment, that's gone to vouchers to get me something that goes into this collection to try and finish that off. But that wasn't all. Same charity shop. Phantom of the Opera 25th anniversary Blu-ray with DVD in it. 
couldn't say no to this. I mean, I'm a I'm a big fan of opera and theatre. I love it. Uh, people uh, take the piss saying I'm a bit of a snob, but that's not true. It's I like the theatrical productions. I think it's great. So I am going to thoroughly enjoy this. I'm just trying to put the uh, label back in in proper place. It's uh, moved around uh, in the shop. So that's very nice. Great condition. Not only that, Star Wars The Clone Wars uh, Volume 1 and Volume 2. And then, sticking on the theme of stars, Star Warrior, Psy Soldiers from Another World. This appears to be a low-budget rip-off of Star Wars. I'll read you the back. In a distant galaxy on a remote rural planet, a shepherd boy, Locke, tends to his animals. But Locke has untapped and untold mind powers that mean he is sought out by Colonel Ryu Hayamaki, who requests his assistance in foiling the Millennium Plan, formulated by Lady Chan. She plans to use psionic warriors to establish her own ruling empire and th overthrowing the existing order, the Galactic Federation. Locke must choose which side of the battle he is on as his vast powers grow. It becomes clear that he alone will decide the fate of the entire universe. Star Wars! <laughs> it's Star Wars with... I don't know, it hasn't, even got, it hasn't even got a screenshot from the film as far as I can tell. That appears to be a, a drawing or a poster. So we'll see where it's actually like. I'm expecting it's going to be really low budget, but really, really funny. But that's not all. The final thing, Quatermass Experiment, Quatermass 2 and Quatermass in the Pit. For a quid, I couldn't pass this up. This looks amazing. It's, uh... Oh. I remember seeing, um... Quatermass in the Pit as a kid, and it was very, very interesting. I wouldn't say I was scared, but I was certainly interested and intrigued. Even got a very nice condition uh, booklet about the, uh, yeah, all about the shores. So this is going to be really, really good fun to watch. Anyway, guys, that's all I've got for you for the moment. So get to your charity shops. People are clearing out for Christmas. Get in there while you can and get some bargains. But anyway, that's all I've got for you this time. So, so apologies for the fact that I'm uh, coming down with a cold. It's just the weather. It's how it is. Anyway, I, I'm pretty sure you won't catch it because, uh, you know, the, the fact that I'm not actually in a room with you, that would help. <laughs> What am I talking about? I don't know. Delirium is kicking in from the illness. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have liked this. And if you did, remember to click that like button, share it with your friends so that they'll know some good games to try and pick up as well. And do subscribe for future videos because there will be more in the future. And if you like any of these, do leave a comment because it really helps the show out. But until next time, I've been Zoe Kirk Robinson. It's great to be back. Love you to see you again. You've been watching a Game Hammer Extra on the Knob Mouse channel. And I'll see you next time.